Hey everyone, Mikey today with some thoughts here on Hand of Fate. Now, this is a pretty interesting game, and there's also a sequel that I intend on playing somewhat soon, hopefully, called Hand of Fate 2. Uh, however, this is the first game, and I'm not playing it with any DLC or whatever, right? I got it through a Humble Monthly at some point, and so far I'm about halfway through the story mode. So we're going to continue off that point. don't really think there's going to be any spoilers, because this is kind of a mix between a card-based game and a little bit of a strategy game as well. And so the basic premise is we have a boss to eventually defeat here. And so we're doing another run to defeat this boss. Uh, so far I've not died yet, so I don't actually know what would happen if I did. Um, but yeah, I get certain curses thrown at me. Uh, there's some challenges if you're into that. There is a deck building aspect for different kinds of cards. Now the game itself will offer to automatically build you a deck. Every time you defeat a boss you get more cards, you gotta play with a bigger deck, and the game will automatically offer you to say hey we'll just assemble kind of an ideal deck. And that's what I've done so far, it's worked really well, but if you're into more deck building you know, you can see all the cards that I've currently got equipped down here, as well as the rest of my cards available up here. So, a lot of basic acts, you know, 25 damage, mace 27. Whereas if you look at some of my current weapons that I could potentially pick up, they're all, you know, higher in damage, they have effects, so on and so forth. So, that's how that deck goes. And so if you want to turn on some challenges and stuff, you can do that. Uh, so far, I've just been on the default mode. And then, there you go. And for your encounters, there are different encounters that happen throughout the game. And so again, there's a, a list, let's see if there's... This one's still new. Huh, could have sworn I've done that one. Let's see if there's one that isn't new. There you go, like a trader, for example, right? Uh, so a lot of these events will repeat themselves. I'll kind of point it out as we play through it. Um, however, there are other cards up here as well that I can throw in. That I've used before. Uh, you know, I've had the Devil's Choice come up before had the ambush come up before so you can kind of play around with what kind of encounters you get and there are some advantages to encountering some of these things because well you do get rewards as well for for potentially going for more risky stuff so again i've let the game kind of build the deck for me uh it's worked pretty well so far whoops yeah i'll do start game you have taken one of my symbols now we begin to play in earnest. My scepter is at stake, and I do not So, yeah, dealer there is going to do his thing. The gameplay is super straightforward. You know, yeah, it's kind of a deck building game. Like I said, you don't you don't have to interact with the deck building side if you don't want it to. Scales. Uh, so it becomes more of just a strategy game now, at that point. The stakes have been uh, raised. So it is neat. No There's a lot of layers. Not use There's a lot of stuff you. going on. And I think they have a pretty cool idea here. A challenge for you, and a token if you succeed. All right. And so those tokens are kind of interesting because they do give you more stuff to build up your deck, and you want to potentially get them if you can. And so in this case here, I've got two choices. So this is a card that. I established in previous game and so there are story elements that carry along between different games as well so there's a lot of stuff going on it's a pretty pretty interesting game and so all right so I shouldn't trust the goblin however 
you know. We'll see how it goes, right? That's that's the nice part about this, which I'll probably meet him pretty soon. Uh, so, injured adventurer. I'll ask him for his troubles, because I, I think we can help him. I like nothing more people. than the chance to see how you handle yourself in these circumstances. So here's a choice, right? Another choice. I don't want to... I don't want to deal with him. Let's take him out. And so this is where the action element comes in. Now, this part of the game is very simple. There's not a whole lot to it. It's not a particularly challenging combat mechanic at all, but hey, it mixes it up. You know, it feels like it's kind of turn-based in how it's built. The timing windows are pretty big. Everything's fairly predictable. There, There is a timing to both my actions and the enemy actions. But as you can see, it's generally pretty easy to get out of combat. Uh, so unless you have curses against you, that may combat potentially not a very smart thing to do. So far I've been going in for combat options when they've been available. Cool. A quick flash of gold and the bandits will forget themselves. Huh. Seems like a neat, neat thing to have. And so that, that's kind of why, at least to me, combat's not necessarily a bad thing. You tend to get better rewards in a lot of cases as well. The risk is that you take damage, and if you take too much damage, you might, might not heal enough by the time you get to the boss. And so that's kind of the balance. But in my case, combat so far has been tremendously easy. I appreciate a few times efforts. I do take damage, I can I heal from it rather quickly, game. so... It is a pleasure to see you play. A ship at Yeah, it gives you kind of an idea of what this game is all about. Like some of the paths so far, at least early on, the paths will be generally pretty linear. Um, I don't have any gold to make this worthwhile, so we'll just skip over the shop. Well separates the highest from the lowest, and that is in itself a form of knowledge. Doesn't even offer us anything. All right, six. That's gonna be pretty easy though. And so yeah, combat's pretty straightforward. You'll see green things above their head. With my shield, I can counter it. If it's red like that, I can just hit space and dodge out of the way instead. Now you can directly counter with an attack instead of uh, doing a defend. So there are two different ways to counter in this game. Um, one is more reliable than the other, I guess is the way to put it. I'm not sure why the audio is so decent, but you know. That's hand of fate, really. It's about... I mean... It's about as deep as it is, at least looking at it at first glance, but... Like I said kind of earlier on, right? One of the encounters I had was like, hey, Elven hair because Roaming something that forward, happened in a previous game. For the truth. Even though you kind of start from scratch, there are some elements that carry over every, every run. And so, that seems like an interesting idea. Some of these cards, like the tokens I get, um, you're developing like more individual storylines in that route as well. Ha. And so some of I these know you will not tell me. special like encounters. Oh, man. You are silent. I'm getting like our old friend, the Jack of Play. Most exciting cards. Oh, we'll get to do a boss battle again. Cool. 
Um, but yeah, I kind of like some of the ideas they have going. It's it's interesting. It's definitely different than any just about anything else out there. Um, because his ranged attacks really suck. I'd rather not deal with him if I don't have to. One of the things I do have to be a little bit careful about if these bad people up. Not sure why he's not attacking, but I'll take it. Um, one of the things I have to be a bit careful is they can't poison me. It only really affects me in the battle. It doesn't affect me outside of it, but again, it's one of those things, like I said, you don't want to lose a ton of health, necessarily. I'm sure you're grateful for that. Now, the different floors you go through, they get longer and longer, and so it's not a huge problem. We're still really early into a run. Um, I think so far, my first three or four... My first three runs, I finished full health. My fourth one, I, if I'd taken an extra turn, I would have finished full health, so... Again, I'm kind of breezing through this. It's, it's been a little easy. However, there's all sorts of other well, options then. you can do. How will you and I'm sure the game has been gradually getting more and more challenging. And so in this case, I always attack him because... I mean... 30 gold is not a whole lot, but I can also come out of this ahead, right? I'm not going to lose any gold here, and instead I'm going to gain a bunch of stuff. That was me defending way too early. I don't know how a shield can deflect stuff that way, but... You know, I ain't complaining. It is super effective. So yeah, you can kind of see what I mean. Like, the combat is... Timing win is incredibly large. And unless you... Literally are not paying attention like I was doing there. Um, you're going to be able to either roll out of the way or deflect the attack. Uh, depending what's coming in. So, I lost a little bit of health. I'll heal health every time I move, so that's not too bad. And instead of giving away all my gold, I gain a little bit of gold. I gain a new weapon. And... Yeah, so they heal six per, per turn, so... It's not what too much. sort of scoundrel would go through a sleeping man's belongings? So this is a new card. Huh. Seeing as he's he's attacked my stuff, so there are some long lasting choices. Because if I lower my weapon and let him go, I could potentially get different rewards for this at the end of this run. Because uh, he is handing me a token for it, or I can also attack him. Now let's go with the aggressive option. Okay, fair enough. So we took out the the actual banner and a bunch of other people coming in. That's that's not a huge problem. So yeah, it's it's a neat idea. So this game came out, if I remember correctly, this game came out in like 2015. So it is it is definitely an older game. I don't remember when the second one came out. But, yeah, just looking at the release list, this thing was doing something pretty neat back then. 
and even today, like, it feels like in the last couple of years there's been a bit of a resurgence in some of these card games, but this one, this one really goes like, it goes pretty, pretty deep in all sorts of directions. Ah, the forest ghost, yeah. Interesting. Again, that's a reference to another thing I saw earlier on in a previous run. So there's starting to be a lot more recurring things as well as time goes on, uh, which is pretty cool. So Did how about we do, tell your we'll do one more card here. A fortune teller is at their most base and despicable when they begin to believe their own lies. Okay, so yeah, this is another one I can choose to. My powers are genuine. I can choose to sneak away and not bother. This is actually a new enemy. I don't think I've seen any of the scales, which I guess are dragons. Or you could attempt to take him by surprise. So this is a kind of a roll here. Uh, so if I can keep track of that card, a choice. Select which your desire. I didn't, uh, but I can almost. We'll go with the first one. Yeah, it's like I can almost guarantee it's not the first one. So a failure in this case is not too bad. A success would have probably resulted in me potentially eliminating all of them, or at least one of them. And then a um, yeah, and a huge failure. Oops would result in even worse stuff, which I've had that happen a few times. It is not fun. <laughs> but it is what it is. You know, you gotta roll with the cards you dealt, really. I'm trying to figure out when that other trap attacks me. These guys are definitely a lot more to deal with. It's cool that the traps work against them too. You could also shield dash them, which is a strategy that might be invisible. That was worth it. That was something slightly different than what you usually see. And in this case, three game cards, which can be anything from food, which you can consume one per turn, gold, which I can buy stuff with. Occasionally you get health, occasionally you get equipment cards as well. But anyways, that is Hand of Fate. It's, um, it's really neat. I was kind of unsure if I was going to continue playing this one and hopping into the new one, but honestly, kind of seeing some of the recurring things more than ever, uh, I might might at least stick through with a full playthrough, if possible. Uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.